I released a video a while back showing how to use IEMA on Array for MetaTrader 4, and I demonstrated the use of that by using a print statement to show the values coming from the IEMA on Array function. And then I've received a question that says, that's nice, but how do you show this on an indicator? And I thought maybe the best way to answer that question is to do a very quick explainer video to show you how to use IMA on array to create an indicator. And this shouldn't take very long. So I'm doing this video a little differently to the others. I'm actually going to do, or I'm going to write the indicator as you kind of look over my shoulder. So let's not waste too much time and let's get started on this. I've got MetaTrader 4 open, but let me go to the editor. There's my orchard folder. I'm going to create a new folder in here, which I'm going to call MA on array example. And then I'll just new file, custom indicator, MA on array example. Okay. Leave everything checked and finish. There we go. That's the beginnings. So first I need to define the indicator. So set the color uh, set the style I'll make that a solid line and I'm going to set the type to being draw line And then make that nice and wide. I did forget here, I need to number these. So that's color one, style one, type one, and width one. Quick check, yep. Uh, so now it's a moving average. For a moving average, I need to have two inputs. I need the period and the type of moving average calculation. So input int IP period equals 14 and input. Now here I'll use the enum for the MA method. I'll just use simple moving average for this. Okay, I need a buffer for the values I'm going to be calculating. So double buffer MA. And because I'm going to be calculating IMA on array, I need an array to store the values that I'll be calculating. This needs to be in the global space. So that gives me my buffer for the data. And now I can go down to the on init section. I need to do set index buffer number zero to buffer MA. And I'll set index buffer one for the data. Why am I using an index buffer instead of just an array? By setting an index buffer, MetaTrader will automatically move the values in this as new bars are created on the chart and it will automatically remove old values from the end when bars reach the end of the chart and drop off. So MetaTrader is going to take care of the sizing and the shifting of values in here for me, just saves me some work. So I might as well make this an indicator buffer. And because I have now two buffers where I previously said, well, oh, that shouldn't be four, that should be a one, where I previously said indicator buffers one, 
I'm going to need to add an indicator buffer. Indicator buffers two adds an extra buffer. Um, now I'll show you this when we run the example, but the reason I set buffers here to one and then added one here instead of just setting it to two in the first place, the number of buffers that I show here will appear in the input box that you get when you first open an indicator. And I only want to show the moving average. I don't want to show the data from this buffer, from the data buffer. So by limiting that to one, you'll only see the drawing indication, drawing information in the input box for the moving average buffer. And also when it's running in the data window, you'll only see that one set of values from the moving average buffer. You won't see the values from this data buffer. Okay, so done that, that should be all on the input. And then we're down to doing the calculations. Get rid of that. Uh, the usual thing here now, I need to calculate how many bars I need, to, or I need to determine how many bars need to be calculated on each loop. So, Limit equals you've probably seen this before, just how many rates do I have available in total and how many have I previously calculated? The difference between those is what I need to calculate, but also just to force the current bar to recalculate every time, we then add a little test here. just add one to the limit if we've been through more than once. Okay, uh, then I just need to loop through those bars. So, and I'm calculating from limit minus one down to zero using I minus minus, okay. So the first thing I need to do is put the information into my buffer data. And I'm just going to use the close price. Um, if you were doing this for real, you'd put your own values in there, but I'm not trying to calculate any particular information. And by using the close price, I can later in the demonstration show that the value I get from this, as in the line on chart, is the same as the line that the moving average indicator shows. So I close symbol period and shift is I. Now, as a moving average, the first time this runs through, I'm going to be calculating limit all the way back to the beginning, which means I'm not going to have enough bars to calculate that moving average. What I want to do is calculate using as many bars as I have until eventually I have enough bars to calculate according to my input period. So I'm going to set up a temporary variable here that just tells me how many bars I can use in the calculation. And all I'm saying is if uh, rates total minus i is less than in period, so I don't have enough bars to do the calculation, then I'm going to set this to minus i, which is as many bars as I have. Otherwise, I'm going to use in period. Okay, so if I don't have enough, or if I have less bars available, counting to the left from I, if I don't have as many bars as I've specified in my period for the moving average calculation, then I'm going to use as many bars as I have, rate total minus I, otherwise I'll use it for period. And after that, I simply have to set the buffer MA. and I pass in my data buffer. The total I'm going to set to zero, which means use all of the bars in the buffer in the buffer data array. Uh, period. Oops, no, I don't want to use that. I want to use my temporary variable that I just created. Shift, I'm going to leave it zero. Uh, and using the method and I'm calculating this for bar number I. 
and just close the for loop. Let me see if that compiles or if I've made a mistake. That compiled, I think that's everything. Very quick, very simple. Let's go in here and there's my indicator. Let me add it in here, 14 and simple, right? Um, and you'll see here colors, there's only one indicator showing here. So, okay, great. Now I have a moving average showing on screen. Let me show the data window. And you can see here in the data window, I only have one value showing. So I've, I've hidden the, um, the data buffer from this. And now just to show that I'm getting the same results, I'm going to add a moving average, 14 periods, simple, apply to close, navy, nice thin line. And I'll zoom in here with the editor so that you can see that this blue line for the moving average indicator is exactly in the middle of the thicker white line that I've created for my IMA on array indicator. So I'm getting exactly the same result. And that's it. As simple as that, Obviously, if you wanted to do something more complex, you'd be using some other value than the close here. But once you calculate that value, put it into the data buffer and everything just works for you. I went through this quickly. Maybe you need to pause, rewind, look at it a couple of times. But that's the simple answer to how do you use IMA on array to put an indicator on screen. So I hope you found this useful. Please leave a like click the subscribe button, click the bell, and then you'll see the next time we release one of these videos. Thanks for watching.